So these Haitian immigrants were crossing a truck into the Dominican Republic. They weren't processed by immigration. Um, and instead of stopping the truck, um, they started firing at the truck. Um, they fired endless amounts of bullets uh, to the point where the truck uh, veered off the road, crashed. Um, there were a couple of survivors, uh, but even then, after the people were running away, the Dominican army was still firing at these people. The Inter-American Court and Commission are trying to stem the erosion of rights that is happening, rap more and more rapidly happening, because of greater militarization of the borders in the Americas. And by militarization, I mean uh, borders that are not, uh, where countries are not at war with each other. Uh, so these are peaceful borders, but we see massive militarization going on. This is true with the U.S.-Mexico border. It's true with the Haitian-Dominican border. It's true with the Ecuador-Colombian border. What that does is that it undermines the guarantees, the international human rights guarantees, and particularly the regional guarantees uh, to all individuals uh, that certain rights must be respected under all circumstances. The militarization of the border in the Dominican Republic, it's the unique border. It's the only border on the Hispaniola. Um, so it's a big deal because there is also a race issue. Um, the people that are crossing over are going from a, a country that's predominantly black to a country that's predominantly white, Hispanic, but white nonetheless. So there is that, uh, that further divide. This ongoing systemic discrimination against Haitians in uh, the Dominican Republic. That's, that has had uh, a, a domino effect in the region. It's affected us in, uh, in our treatment of Haitians, uh, of Haitian refugees over the years. We've had uh, massive litigation regarding the difference in the way the United States has treated Haitians versus other refugee groups. When nobody does anything about it, people talk about it, uh, people um, just, I mean, they shake their heads at it, but nobody does anything about it. So when you have a real life case with real life victims and people that are actually there as proof of the dis discrimination, it's much easier or it's more useful rather uh, to have someone go in and actually do something about it, whether it's in the courtroom like the attorneys are doing or like we were doing by writing a brief that hopefully will help those attorneys and will hopefully um, I hopefully persuade the court in, the, in one way. Buenas tardes. También se la bienvenida al señor intérprete que nos hace la interpretación del creol al español. We did not have the opportunity to meet the victims and the victims' families, and a number of them were the star witnesses at the proceedings. And it was extremely emotional to hear their live testimony and watch the judge's reactions uh, to hearing the testimony. It was uh, uh, very enlightening for me, but also pulled the whole project together and made it very meaningful. Um, whenever you hear th from the actual victims, uh, all of your work becomes real.